call to order. May 14, 2020, meeting of the Indian River County Planning and Zoning Commission. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? None here. <coughs> None here. Approval of the minutes. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion to approve. <clears throat> Seconded by Mr. Howe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we get um, whoever is online to um, connect it? Sure. Uh, Mr. Stewart, are you there on, on the phone? I'm there. Uh, I'm, I voted aye in favor of uh, approving minutes as well. All right. And Ms. <laughs> Mitchell? Or, or Dr. Day? No, we we have a, we do have Brian. Oh. Brian, this is Alan Blackwood. I'm here. Oh, Alan, you are here. Okay, sorry, Alan. I didn't know if you'd be on the call or not. All right. Okay. And Ryan, did you hear me? This is Beth Mitchell. I I was on mute. No, Beth, I didn't hear you on mute, but we hear you now, loud and clear. So it sounds like we have uh, we have everyone except for Dr. Day. Okay. All right. Okay. Next order of business, item four. Moray Marsh, request for administrative permit use approval for Moray Marsh Stormwater Treatment Facility, limited public utility, located at the northeast corner of 53rd Street and 66th Avenue, Indian River County, owner, agent, zoning A1, agricultural, up to one unit per five acres, land use designation, AG1, agricultural one, up to one unit per five acres, SPMA 20, 04 11 2019 10 04 7 86 254. This matter is quasi judicial. Anybody like to speak in this matter, please stand up and be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And anybody had any ex parte communications? Is that Anyone on the, on the phone, uh, any ex parte communications? No, I am having trouble hearing. Yeah, I know. It's, it, it is hard to hear. We'll, we'll ask uh, the chairman to speak up a little bit. Uh, how about you, uh, Mr. Stewart? No, sir. And Alan? Uh, no. All righty. Thank you. Gentlemen, please proceed. I will turn it over to Chair. Okay, good evening. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, Scott Rodriguez with the Planning Division. Can you hear me? Is the microphone on? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, maybe it's one on. more time. There you go. Try that. How about this? Okay. I'll try to get closer to the mic. Scott Rodriguez with the Planning Division. The item before you is Morn Marsh Administrative Permit Use Approval, uh, the re a request by Indian River County. Subject site has an A1 zoning designation that requires an administrative permit use approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission. The proposed stormwater facility is classified as a limited public utility and is subject to criteria in the county's land development regulations. The site is located at the northeast corner of 53rd Street and 66th Avenue. This is an aerial of the existing conditions of the site. Uh, for the next few slides, I just want to point out to the Commission that the north is going to be to the right and not up. The site plan depicts the location of the proposed stormwater facility improvements. The proposed access to the site is provided via a gated, full movement, two-way driveway connection to 53rd Street, consisting of a single ingress lane and egress lane at the southern portion of the site. The site will be internally accessed through a 15-foot wide service road on the east side of the site. The project's landscape plan meets all applicable landscaping regulations of the county land development regulations, including roadway buffers along the property lines frontage on 53rd Street and 66th Avenue, and also provides perimeter buffers along the project's north and east property lines. 
interior parking area landscaping, and non-vehicular area landscaping. The staff is recommending approval, uh, recommends that the Pl Planning and Zoning Commission grant administrative permit use approval for Moorhand Marsh with conditions related to unity of title, landscape, and buffer improvements. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions of staff? Any questions of staff? That includes the folks on the phone. Any questions of staff? I have no questions. Thank you. No questions here. Thank you, George. I have a couple quest I have a couple questions. Okay. Uh, mostly for information, but uh, number one, is there a fence around this project? Who, who is that speaking? Uh, Alan. Yes, there is a fence around the perimeter. Okay, that's what I thought. I didn't see it any place. I just wanted to confirm. Uh, number two, I'm assuming from the description that when the water then gets outflowed to the uh, uh, North Relief Canal, there's no harmful additives or anything like that as a result of this process. So it'll actually be cleaner water headed down to the lagoon. Is that assumption correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's true. What Ryan said, uh, Alan. There's no, no additives of any type. We're using aquatic plants uh, and algae to remove the nutrients, and uh, we're not adding anything other than. Uh, your occasional wildlife might add something, but we'll probably take that out as well. Is is the technology of those aquatic plants the same or different from, as I recall, we had when I was there, there were two kind of treatment facilities, one down near Oslo and the other kind of just north of 53rd, 53rd Street. Uh, one was called Spoonbill, and I can't remember what the other one was called. Well, we had uh, Egret Marsh and Osprey Marsh are two algal turf scrubbers, and uh, they use algae to remove the uh, nutrients from the water. The Spoonbill Marsh is sort of, it's more of a passive system run by utilities, and it's got uh, mangroves and other sort of brackish water type plants, and the water just flows through that system passively and, and there's no mechanical harvesting like there is at Egret Marsh or uh, Osprey Marsh or like there will be at this facility. We, at this one we're using primarily water lettuce to remove most of the nutrients okay. and it's followed by an algal reaeration unit that we use algae to remove some additional units but it's mostly for reoxygenation of the water and then there's a uh, a uh, pair of deep settling basins and uh, uh, small wetlands that the water also flow through and have a little additional removal by plants. Okay, and the only other question I had, just general information, but what do you do with the plants after they're harvested? Do they go off site to some location? We're hoping to compost them on site. Uh, we're planning on, right now I'm researching a a chopper uh, type of a machine to chop the water, harvested water lettuce into smaller pieces. And then we'll mix those with the harvested algae and take that mix uh, and, and, and mix it with mulch from the landfill and then make some uh, hopefully high quality compost that we can use as a uh, soil supplement for the county parks or uh, wherever else we want to use it around here. Okay. I, I would just say uh, when I was at the county and I did visit, I guess, Spoonville and Egret, was, I guess that was the name of the other one, they're really kind of neat facilities. Uh, it, it's all kind of a neat idea to try to uh, use these different technologies to take the nutrients out of the water before it hits the, the lagoon and causes uh, algae blooms there. So. No, I, I think it's uh, from separate and apart from a land planning thing. I think it's just a good idea. <clears throat> That's all I have. Thank 
Any further questions? Um, I have a question. Uh, actually, one that was piggybacking on um, the plant and what the disposal was going to be. But prior to disposal, I mean, is there an odor of concern? Because we do have some neighbors right. around there. We're hoping uh, if you if you just leave the water lettuce be after you harvest it, yeah, there is an odor. Uh, what we have with I don't maybe you could put the picture back up there, but right after the water lettuce units, there's two basins or two two areas which are uh, uh, you can't. Go ahead. Is there a pointer or something? Uh, there should be. He can use, oh, here, you can use this. Oh, oh. Oops. Oh. I think I can. How do I? Yeah, yeah, Is just, it just, just a regular mouse? Oh, okay. Use the cursor. All right. There you go. Okay. This, uh, there's your water lattice basins right there. there there's four of them. Uh, each one is about an acre and a third, more or less. These units here are the algae units. And right next to them is this, these long rectangular pieces. They are uh, where we're going to take the water lettuce when we harvest it, like from this squad here. We'll go into this area. We'll harvest that, <coughs> chop it up, let it sit, and mix it with compost You know, as soon as we can after we chop it to get the, the composting process started. And at the same time, we'll harvest the adjacent algal unit and mix that algae with that uh, water lettuce compost mix or, or mulch mix. And then at some point we tend uh, to haul it off of there, take it down here and put it on this larger area, which is uh, a big composting pad and pile it up there and occasionally aerate it. And we're hoping with that process, at least when we were composting at Egret Marsh, just the pure algae, uh, the only odor you could notice at that place was if you were, you know, like maybe here at Orion or uh, just a few feet away from it. And it, it wasn't a, a disgusting odor as long as you do the, the composting correctly. And if, I guess if worst case came and it just uh, totally blew up on us, we would probably have to haul it to the landfill or something. But we're going to try our best to compost. How does the, the marsh uh, compare to this facility in size as far as where you're going to uh, let it dry out or it smell? was It was, I think, about the same size or slightly smaller. And the, the flow rate was the same. The Eager Marsh's uh, treatment unit was basically all algae as far as the composting part. And it was about uh, 5.6 acres in size. The water lattice units here are uh, a little over four, uh, four point something acres. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Okay. Anyone on the phone, any further questions? No. Okay. None for me. All right, thanks. No, no. Applicant want to add anything further? No? No, okay. I'm for Terry. Well, Thank it's you. just uh, one of the county's uh, last big regional projects for the time being anyways, and it's the, this North Relief Canal that it's going to treat the water from is the last canal that doesn't have a, a treatment unit on it other than Spoonbill. But Spoonbill pulls water out of the lagoon directly. It doesn't take any canal water. So this will be the, uh, the third big one for us and uh, another attempt to meet the TMDL requirements that DEP is going to impose. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. Oh, Ron, yes. could I ask one more question? Go ahead, Alan. Um, it just occurred to me that um, we approved a project at Grand Harbor a while back that involved kind of water coming into this project and, and circulating around uh, and eventually reaching the lagoon, and um, that was explained to us as a, a means of trying to cl cleanse the water a little bit more uh, before it hits the lagoon. I'm assuming that the water we're talking about coming out of this facility that we're approving tonight 
then we'll go down and into that Grand Harbor project that's supposed to, in some way, cleanse the water before it hits the lagoon, which, if I'm correct in that, we're getting kind of a, uh, if it all comes to fruition with Grand Harbor, we're getting kind of a double cleansing before the water hits the lagoon. Am I correct on that? Right. Alan, are you talking about the larger, the Spoonbill Reserve project that was approved conceptually or a smaller water treatment project within Grand Harbor? No, no. Yeah, it was a big, uh, it was a big project, and uh, it had like a series of canals or right. something going through the the right. uh, residential area, and then eventually coming from there into the lagoon. Right. So that that, what the that was Spoonbill Reserve, a conceptual PD with that had a long system of canals and treatment uh, throughout right. the. Um, that was actually going to pump water from the lagoon through the system and oh, treat it back okay. out. But that being said, okay. yes, the same, the water, this, this project is upstream on the North Relief Canal. So any canal water that would be included if it's mixed together would be treated. And if it is introduced into that system together with the uh, ri uh, lagoon water, it would be double treated. But yeah, that was primarily a lagoon water treatment project. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? None. Can I have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Motion by Harry. Motion by Mr. Howell. Second. Second, Second by, by Chip. Mr. Landers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. That sounds like everybody. Okay. Next order of business. Yep. Commissioners. Commissioners matters. None. Planning matters. Uh, so I believe you guys have the planning informational packet that Bill put together. Um, so feel free to read through that. It's on the COVID topics and um, as of right now we don't have anything planned for the uh, second meeting in May we're gonna try to not hold <laughs> as many meetings as possible and until uh, you know things loosen up but um, we this was a county project that they are looking to move forward on so we we'll, of course if anything changes we'll let you know thank you attorneys matters I have none. The only thing that maybe Mr. Madsen would want to do was introduce Ryan as the new chief of planning. Is that something that <laughs> could be done or not? We got musical chairs going on. <laughs> oh, wait, my lord. Well, Madsen, uh, community development director, commissioners, behold your new chief of long range planning. Uh, current development. Current development. No, I don't want both. We just. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ryan has an encyclopedic knowledge of, in the manner of his predecessors, uh, John McCoy, whose last day was last week, and we'll miss John dearly, of course, but uh, we're in good hands with Ryan uh, taking the lead. And with that, and uh, we hope to see more of Scott making presentations as well. Good job, Scott, tonight. And uh, thank you very much. Of course, anything you need, contact myself, Ryan, or Scott. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ryan. And we need to recognize Roland's last day is coming up as well. Yes. Yes, there'll be a proclamation for Roland at the next Board of Communication meeting. Roland, in, in the typical humble manner of Roland, uh, he doesn't want to be present for it, so it'll be just <laughs> an informational item. I don't know, something about me, I think he thinks it's a trick. You know, he thinks I'm going to have some, some embarrassing uh, send-off plan for him, and actually I did, but uh, he won't be there. <laughs> okay, meeting adjourned. All right, guys, we're going to hang up.